There are a lot of components built into RTI that, if done well, can really make a difference for our English language learners. One of the things I think we need to do is really focus on the quality of core instruction and making sure that that is as strong as possible because it's the core instruction that's really the foundation of the pyramid, if we're using a pyramid. Um, everything else is built on, on that foundation. So we need to really take a look at the instruction we are provided. And there are some ways built into RTI to do that. Uh, we do progress monitoring, we do universal screening, and that enables us to look at class-wide data sets as well as how individual children are doing to get a sense for where students in a class seem to be doing well, where the instruction seems to be appropriate, and maybe where the teacher might need, um, might benefit from some professional development to help with certain areas. So when we think about the progress monitoring data, it's important that we don't want too many kids not reaching benchmarks. So when we see a class or a grade level where we have a lot of kids not doing well, what that means is we need to change instruction. So it's not that we just move all these kids to tier two, it's that we need to go in and look at what's going on to make sure the instruction we're providing is as strong as it can be. So is it at the right level for kids? Is it meeting their language and literacy needs? Um, is it a practice that's been validated with similar students in similar circumstances? It's really important that the teacher has a strong relationship with students, that the classroom environment is conducive to learning, that the teacher um, has a good relationship with the family, with community. Um, all of these are important factors as well. And one of the things this is going to take is observing in classrooms and collaboration, recognizing that any one teacher doesn't have all the expertise, but that together as a team, by sharing our expertise, then we'll be able to better meet students' needs. And that's one of the components of RTI I think is, is really exciting. Um, there's one school I know where the English language acquisition teacher at the beginning of the year, rather than seeing groups of students, she goes around to all of the first grade classrooms and works with the teachers on their instruction to make sure it's as appropriate as it can be for the English language learners in the class. So sort of a building capacity and strengthening instruction, not in a judgmental or evaluative way, but in a supportive way. So I think that's important. I think each school can identify the expertise and figure out what works best for that school depending on, on that expertise. I think that um, there are some great examples out there of what it can look like when students are taught in culturally and linguistically responsive ways. Some colleagues and I just recently published a book with uh, Josie Bass that um, looks at classroom observations in teachers' classrooms who are really fabulous, you know, providing great instruction at Tier 1, um, Tier 2, and Tier 3, some of the teachers in Spanish and, and some in English. But um, you can learn a lot from those teachers about sort of the big picture and what it takes to really be a strong teacher, how you help children connect what they're learning to their prior knowledge, to their experiences outside of school. I think another aspect of, of the effective teacher, even at the first tier, is this idea of having high expectations and sort of being relentless. You know, trying a, a research-based practice, but recognizing that children don't all learn the same way. And if one thing doesn't work, you know, trying something else. So not giving up, but looking for ways to support student learning and recognizing that, you know, a lot of kids do need a little scaffolding, a little support to get it. And, being able to do that. So in other words, being able to differentiate instruction, you know, that, um, that the teacher has a good sense for what the child needs to know so that 
he or she can see, well, gee, it looks like, you know, maybe we need a little more help in this area and understanding what that would look like and how to provide that. So, you know, we're talking about pretty skillful teachers here. I would say, too, that the International Reading Association it has done some great work in this area in terms of what the core should look like. I think in terms of Tier 2 and Tier 3 interventions, Sylvia Lennon Thompson and Sharon Vaughn have done some great work, some excellent research studies where children learn, um, are learning to read in either English or Spanish and then the interventions are provided in the, the same language. And they've shown that their Tier 2 interventions can be very powerful for helping children make a lot of progress. So certainly, you know, adding to the research base about what will help children learn. But Sylvia said something very interesting to me when we presented together recently, and that was, she said, you know, the English language learners really are doing very well with these Tier 2 interventions, but I think that really what we're learning is that they weren't taught well enough in the core classroom and that what we're learning really is that if they had been taught better in the first tier, they wouldn't have needed to go on to the second tier. And that, I thought, was a really interesting comment. So just to wrap up then, we really need to start by looking very closely at the instruction we're providing at Tier 1 and making sure most kids are excelling. Because, you know, English language learners are every bit as bright and capable as every other child. And they should be thriving in that general ed environment with just a few maybe needing more help. When we see it the, as the majority of English language learners not doing well, then it really is a sign that we need to improve that instruction.